this day, God, the first Sunday in the month of April of 2022, who knew that we would be here to give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. God, yeah. we have grateful hearts this Thank morning. You, God. Come sit next to me, God. I desire to know you, God, in the beauty of holiness. We need you this morning, God. We thank you this morning, God, for the blood that still reaches to the lowest of us. It still reaches to the highest of us. We thank God for the blood this morning thank you, God. that was shed for all of us, God. Thank you. We thank you, God, for bringing us, God, to the fountain this morning. Now pour into us, God, what has been depleted by time, by frustration. De de pour into us, God, what has been depleted all week long, God. Pour into us today, God, your love, your mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 I shall read to you this morning. From Psalm 75, because our God reigns. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works we declare. When I shall receive the congregation I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pilgrims of it. I have said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, lift not up the horn. Lift not up the horn on high, but speak. Speak to the people calmly. Speak for promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth us down and he setteth up another. The word of God for the people of God. My God reigns. Hallelujah. When you catch the words, you just declare with us today that my God reigns. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above, above every name. name. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. name. With power. With power and majesty. Dominion authority, you reign with power, with power and majesty, dominion authority, you reign. Oh, my God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, Lord, you reign above every name. You got it, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name. How does he reign? With power and majesty. Dominion. 
scripture by Reverend Thomasine Adams and we will have our selection from the choir at this particular time we're going to open you may need to go in your memory and pull up song, um, uh, our hymn number 77 and it's entitled the fount of every blessing and I want to read it for you I want to read it before you because sometimes we run through life and we miss what's good for the soul. I love every word and every stanza and I want to read it to you. You may have an opportunity to sing it along with us, but let me read to you the, the words of the hymn written by Robert Thomas. And I wish I could tell you the history of it, but listen to the, listen to the words. It says, come thy fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Strings of mercy never ceasing. It calls for a song of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, oh, fix me on it. Mount of God's redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I'm even come. And I hope by thy good pleasures, safely to arrive at home. Because Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to save my soul from danger, interposed his precious blood. Will you listen to verse three? Will you just hear stanza three? It says, oh, to grace, how great a debtor, Daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace, Lord, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee, prone to leave thee. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the 
Lord God, I love. He is my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy course above. Will you sing that with conviction this morning? Will you sing it like you prone to wonder? But his grace brought you back. Come thy fount of every blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Woo. Come. Come the fount of every blessing. To my heart. To my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs. Call for songs of love and praise. Teach me. Teach me songs. God, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I feel you. Hallelujah, God. I feel you. Hallelujah. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace and mercy as we approach the throne of grace where we shall find mercy at the mercy seat. But not only are we at the mercy seat, we are at the foot of the throne. Our Father and our God, we come before you this morning with hearts of thanksgiving grateful for the one who gives the grace grateful for the one you God who gives the mercy grateful for the one who gave his only begotten son that we might not die in our sins but we might have eternal life we are grateful as we come this morning uh, I come and I as we pray to invoke the Holy Spirit to fill this sanctuary on this morning. I pray that the Holy Spirit will create in us a pure heart and renew a right steadfast spirit within us. God, we come on this humble day, Sunday, the first Sunday in April for this communion experience because we come remembering what you did for us through your son, your only begotten son, who died on Calvary's cross that our sins might be forgiven. First they are forgotten and then they are forgiven. What a blessing. But God, I pray that we will come right to this table Pray that we will come right to this table on today. Holy Spirit, let us come right to the table. 
because this is not something that we do out of the ordinary. We come to do this in remembrance of your only begotten son. So let us come to the table with a pure heart and a right spirit within us. So God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just come and touch every heart, every spirit, every soul in the sanctuary on this morning. God, re renew us, revive us, restore us. Forgive us, God, for the way that we have acted during this week, during this month. Forgive us, God, if we have not responded to you in the way that we should have for your blessings and your mercy, your forgiveness and your love. Forgive us on this communion Sunday before we reach this table. And if we have it all against someone, God, in your heart, prepare your heart to go to that person, however, in prayer, and ask for forgiveness, God, and show love to that person. That's right when we come to this table on this morning. God, I pray for every soul that's in the sanctuary, those who are on social media. God, prepare your hearts and your minds and your spirit and your soul as you take communion. If you can't physically, take it in your heart. Because God knows the heart and he examines the heart, God. And we want our hearts to be right. Pray for our Pastor Bob who will come forth and bring that word, God, that will change our hearts. That word will, that will put a right spirit in us before we leave this place. We don't want to leave this place the same way that we came. We want to leave with a stead right spirit within us. God, we love you. God, we adore you. God, we appreciate you. For if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be dead in our sins? So we're celebrating on this communion Sunday like never before because of the new thing that's happening in our lives. God, we thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you have poured into us, and all that you will con continue to do in our lives hearts, in our minds, and in our ministry, that others might see you in us. It is in the blessed name of Jesus that we pray with hearts of thanksgiving, hearts of gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Precious Jesus, how I love you, how I lift you, how I lift you, my voice, my voice with your praise, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I implore thee. I am Drench my heart. Drench my heart. As my lips. As my lips. Part your grace. Part your grace. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Lord. Amen. We will have our scripture reading for this morning. It's coming from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 10 through 13. And then we will be turning to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 20. I will repeat that as we're standing to respect and honor the word of God. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 
verses 10 through 13. And 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 20. Thus it reads, Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? They are still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah, the 17th chapter, verse 20 reads, early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse, as, as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting, the war cry. The blessed name of Jesus. What a powerful word today. Our souls say amen. May we see it in the presence of God. Praise God. Put your hands together. Come on now. Put your hands together as we worship God. Put your hands together as we worship God. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Honor and power be to the one above. Lord, let your glory reign from heaven above. To the one above, Lord, let your glory reign from heaven above. Jehovah, you reign, and we proclaim that there is none like you. Because of you, I am a new Father, we worship you. Come on. Honor and power be oh. to the one above. Lord, let your glory. Lord, let your glory reign from heaven above. From heaven above. Honor and power be. Honor and power be Woo. to the one above. Lord, let your glory reign from heaven above. Jehovah, you reign. Lord, you are 
Lord, you are powerful. Lord, you are mighty. And we praise your name. Praise is for all of us. Praise is what I do. Hallelujah. When I want to be close to you, I just lift my hands in praise. And right now we're going to praise God, but it's going to be in a different way. And it's a needed way. You know, when you cry and you point to God and you lift your hand, you begin to praise God. And he lifts that thing off of you. Give him all to lift some stuff off of you as well. Uh-huh. It, it ought to lighten your pocketbook. That's what giving ought to do. The grace of giving. The grace of giving. At this time, as we prepare to give, if you need an envelope, the urchins will provide you with one. If you're out there, I'm going to tell you in just a minute how you can sow into good ground. If you want to reap a harvest, just wait a few minutes. I'm going to give you some, something that you can sow into some good ground. We ought to honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. The question has been asked, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. And then we turn around and ask the question, how have we done that? In your tithe and your offering. Your tithe is what you owe. Your offering is what you sow. If you want to be blessed in an overflow, I dare you to start giving. I dare you to start sacrificing so that this church can do the will of God. There are several ways that you can sow into Mount Calvary AME Church. You can sow in person like they are doing in the sanctuary today. We will give in person. You can mail your gift to Mount Calvary AMEC, P.O. Box 20416, Townsend, Maryland, 21286. You can mail it to Mount Calvary AME Church, P.O. Box 20416, Townsend, Maryland. And if you don't, Townsend is T O W S O N. T O W S O N, Maryland. 21286. Or you can give online. Give at www.mtcalvaryame.org. www.mtcalvaryame.org. Or you can give by mobile app. Using your cash app is dollar sign MC. A-M-E-C, or Givelify. That's Cash App, the dollar sign first, M-C, A-M-E-C, or Givelify. And if you can't give by those means, you can call the church. You can call with your credit or debit card and ask for Sister Ursula at 410-296-9474. 410-296-9474. Nine four seven four. We are a living, breathing instrument here for the Lord, ready to be used, and we want you to sow into us so that we can continue to do the work of the Lord. That's Mount Calvary AME Church in Townsend, Maryland. We want to bless God for the gifts that you're going to give. We blessing God in advance. For that person right there writing a check to that person tapping cash app. We want to thank God in advance for you trusting us with what you're about to sow into this ministry. Shall we bow and shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, how grateful we are for those who have purposed in their heart to give. And for those who have just taken a chance on sowing a seed, we thank you, God, for the givers today. For those who are given out of their poverty, they don't have much. To those who are given out of their bounty, we thank you, God. We pray, God, that we will do kingdom work with what is being sold into this house today. We thank you for every heart. We thank you for every sacrifice, God, that will be made to keep the doors open here, to keep the lights on here, to keep the staff. Set. We thank you, God. For every gift that will be sown into this ministry and we will use it likewise. 
We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. He's your only son and our only savior. And the people of God agreed by saying, amen, 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 amen. Please don't forget these gifts. Amen. Don't let me forget it. At this particular time, as we prepare for a preach word from a preacher man, we pray that you set your hearts on receive. Set your heart on receive. Tell the knob off. It's straight receive. Receive the man of God. Just hold your hand up. I, I, I feel a little churchy today. Just hold your, your right hand. I don't want your left hand. Hold the right hand up and say, preach, Bobby. Preach, Bobby. That's what his mama named him. We pray for the preacher as he shall come and stand oh, and bring us a word of God. I have set my dial on receive and I'm ready for it. Amen. Amen. The choir will bring you a selection. Amen. Thank you, God. You are holy. Come on, Kiana. Sing like you know him. Sing like you know him. Hallelujah. Thank you. search the heavens high I can search the earth below but there's no one there is no one no one I can search the heavens high I can search the Earth below, 
Father God, in the wonderful name of Jesus, how we love you, praise you, and we thank you for being God and for being God all by yourself. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have on this day just to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, God, we pray that you will have your perfect will in this place on this day. We pray, God, that you would touch hearts and minds as only you can. We pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will fall fresh on us. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Church, say Amen again. Church, say praise the Lord. Come on, put those sanctified hands together. Give God some praise in the house today. For I declare that God is certainly worthy to be praised. Uh, this morning, I want to call your attention to that passage of scripture that was read earlier in your hearing, and that passage is found in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and I want to lift verse 13, and 1 Samuel chapter 17, I want to lift verse 20a. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, the New King James Version of the Bible has these words recorded as today's text. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose and went to Ramah. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 28, So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took these things and went as Jesse had commanded him. For a few minutes this morning, I simply want to tag this text for preaching when God puts you on in a holding pattern. When God puts you in a holding pattern. My brothers and my sisters, my sisters and my brothers, it was only uh, several months ago that I was on a flight to Atlanta. 
And before leaving BWI, the pilot came over the PA system with his usual spiel, including the ETA in Atlanta. As we were preparing for our descent into Atlanta, the pilot came back on the PA system to inform us of a thunderstorm in the Atlanta area. And the air traffic controllers have put our aircraft in a holding pattern until the storm passes over. And when the storm passes over, we will be able to land. Beloved, all times God does us the same way. Sometimes God puts us in a holding pattern, not to punish us, but to protect us, to keep us out of the storm. And we understand holding patterns because there are times when we pray without ceasing, when we make our requests known, when we seek God's face. Uh, but it seems as if God has placed us on an eternal holding pattern. A holding pattern, a state of waiting or suspended activity or progress we sometimes find ourselves in a holding pattern. When you are sick in your body and you have prayed for healing, but God has not healed you yet. When you have, are having problems with your child and you have placed that child on the altar, but God has not delivered that child yet. You are in a broken relationship and you have given the Lord that relationship, but the Lord has not restored it yet. When you are deep in the, in the belly of difficult situations and you find yourself uh, walking down pathways of perplexities and coming to crossroads or confusion, but there is no word from the Lord yet. What do you do when you have to wait on God? Oh, it's easy to wait on the Lord when you don't have to wait. It's easy to wait on the Lord and be a good courage when you already are encouraged. But every now and then, in the midst of all of your prayers and supplication, God puts you in a holding pattern. Uh, so what do you do and, 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 and why does God put you, why does God put you in a holding pattern? Uh, I believe that we can take a sneaky peek into uh, an experience in the life of David to ascertain the answer. It is no secret within the sacred writings of the Old Testament there that there is no personality that dominates the landscape of the Hebrew scripture more forcefully than David. In fact, you can't talk about Israel's history without talking about David's history. Uh, they are forever entwined and woven together. And, and no matter how you view David, his life was marked by tragedy and triumph, by pain and passion, by dignity and disgrace. David was a warrior and a womanizer. He was an eloquent poet and an extraordinary musician. He was a treacherous friend and a passionate lover. Uh, he was a leader of praise and a tender of sheep. He was a sinner for whom there is no peer and one whom the ages affirm was a man after God's own heart. But David found himself in a holding pattern. Yeah, today's text is found in, 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 in 1 Samuel. The, in, in the book of Samuel is the record of the prophetic work of Israel's last judge. It is a book that speaks not only of David's life, but it is a book also that you will find what I'm calling God's holding pattern. And if by chance you don't recall the circumstances of the text, uh, allow me to unfold the drama for you. Uh, Saul is the king of Israel, but because of his disobedience and his out-of-control ego, 
Saul falls out of favor with God. Yeah, yeah. And so God decides to choose the next king of Israel from the house of Jesse. Uh, therefore, God sends Samuel to Jesse's house to anoint the next king of Israel. And when Samuel shows up on Jesse's doorsteps, uh, a long process ensues to determine which one of Jesse's sons would be anointed the next king of Israel. And one by one, the sons of Jesse uh, uh, stands before Samuel. They, they stand before Samuel. They are young and strong. They, they have impressive resumes. They are dressed for success. But the Bible says every time Samuel thinks he has the next king of Israel, the oil will not come out of the horn. And God says, no, he is not. The one. In essence, God says to Samuel, what are you, what you are seeing is the external, but I'm looking for the internal. I'm not looking for what has the head on, what they have on on the outside, but I'm looking to see what they have on on the inside. I, uh, people look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. So Samuel asked Jesse if he has another son, and Jesse says, yes, but he's not king material. Uh, he's my youngest son. Uh, he's the runt of the litter. He, he's still wet behind the ears. He, uh, he's the one that nobody pays any attention to because he spends all of his time tending sheep and playing his harp. Uh, his name is David. Samuel asks, where is he going and get him? Jesse calls for David, and when David comes in, Samuel sees, that, uh, sees him, and there is no doubt in Samuel's mind that David is the one, the one upon whose shoulders the mantle of leadership for Israel will rest upon, the, the one who will lead his people in war and peace, the one upon whom the, whom the, he, who's the head of, other, uh, 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 the one upon whose head an earthly crown will be placed. David is the one, and the Lord says to Samuel, Rise and anoint him. When Samuel pours the horn of oil on David, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him mightily uh, from that day forward. Uh, I mean, David is blessed. David is set apart. David is anointed to be the next king of Israel. Uh, however, this is not the end of the story. For the rest of chapter 16, David is put in a hold in the pattern. I mean, he doesn't ascend uh, to the kingship in the palace, but 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 he 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 goes back to the field. I mean, chapter 17 says that uh, David is in the field tending sheep. Uh, I mean, in chapter 16, David is anointed king. In chapter 17, David is still tending sheep. Uh, you didn't get it. Uh, let me say that again because you didn't catch it the first time. In the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, David is anointed king. David, but in the 17th chapter of 1 King, David is, of 1 Samuel, David is tending sheep. Uh, I still didn't get it. Maybe the third time is a charm. In chapter 16, David is anointed king, but in chapter 17, he's tending sheep. Ah, there's something wrong with that picture. If I understand this moment in the life of David correctly, he who was taken from the field, and is anointed to be the king, was then sent back into the field to tend some sheep. I, I, I don't understand it. It, it. it doesn't appear to be in the character of God to perform a, uh, such a cosmic sleight of hands. It seems so unfair. Well, I, I, I don't mean to interrogate God, uh, but why does God, why, why does God give David the idea that the kingdom is his and then sends him back to the field to tend sheep? Why does God bless David's life with the oil of anointment and then sends him back into the field? Why does God hold up 
uh, him as the one in whom uh, will be placed authority and power only to send him back in the field from which he did come. Well, I believe I know the reason why. God put David in a holding pattern. And it is for the same reason that God puts us in a holding pattern. Yeah. The pattern has a purpose. That's the, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. The pattern has a purpose. When God puts you in a holding pattern, he has a purpose for doing it. David never questioned why God put him in a holding pattern. Dave, David never raised an, an, an objection to returning to the lowly state of a sheep tender. And, and, and he didn't do it because he trusted God. Uh, he trusted that God would take him to the place uh, uh, where he was destined to be at a time that, that he was destined to be there. In other words, although he didn't understand it, he knew God had a purpose for putting him in the holding pattern. And because God had a purpose for putting him in the holding pattern, David trusted God. Uh, beloved, uh, you have to follow God even when you can't see God. Uh, you got to trust God even when you can't trace God. Uh, I realize that it may be strange for for the scientists among us don't understand it. Uh, for the philosophers among us, they can't accept it. For the intellectuals among us will argue about it. But you have to follow God even when you don't know where God is taking you. Uh, uh, can I tell you that God has a purpose? Uh, yeah, whenever God has, whatever God has designed for your life, uh, nobody can take it away from you. Uh, whatever is intended for you in the perfect will of God cannot be stripped from you. Uh, whatever blessings God has prepared for you is yours and nobody can steal your blessings. Uh, you got to trust God to bless you in the ways that God wants to bless you. Uh, so when God puts you in a holding pattern, uh, he has a purpose for it. Oh, that's why it doesn't matter if you don't know what lies ahead because God knows. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you know if the door is open or closed, God knows. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't know about your grant, your scholarship, your fellowship, your loan, your job opportunity, your next move. God knows. Uh, and because God knows, trust God. Uh, for when you trust God, uh, that blessing is already on the way. Uh, the joy in your soul is there. That position has already been worked out. The, the money is already going to your bank account. The, the problem has already been solved. Your car is already on the production line. The house has already has been deeded in your name. But you got to trust God because God knows what God is doing and he has a purpose for putting you in the holding pattern. And that's why Paul was able to say with clarity, with conviction, and with confidence that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Yes, God has a purpose. He has a purpose for the pattern. Then, secondly, the pattern has a process. Ah, God's holding pattern involves ah, not only a purpose, but it also involves a process. Yeah. In order for God to get you from where you are to where he wants you to be, you got to go through a process. Yeah, we, yeah when, 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 when David was anointed king of Israel, he, he, he was just a boy 
who still had some growing up to do. Uh, uh, David still had to go through, uh, he still had to go to, through puberty. He still had to go through adolescence. Somebody give me another bite. Uh, he had to go through uh, adolescence. And he had to mature. Uh, so, so God put him in a holding pattern, uh, not only for purpose, but for process. Yeah, for process. Uh, can I tell you today that God does not use anybody until he carries them through a process. Uh, purpose denotes process. Uh, uh, check out the record for yourself. Check out the record for yourself. Check out the record for yourself. Uh, yeah, God's purpose Praise was to God. make Noah the head of his reconstruction God. project. Uh, uh, God intended to give Noah charge over the recreation Praise of the God. world, but first it's Noah right. had to spend some time uh, as the head superintendent uh, cleaning out the bottom of a floating zoo. Uh, is there a witness in the house? Uh, I mean, God has purpose for Joseph. Uh, for, uh, Joseph was 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 destined to become the secretary of agriculture in the administration of the Egyptian pharaoh. God intended for Joseph to be in charge when the famine broke out. But but before Joseph could get his intended assignment, uh, God allowed him uh, to go into a pit and then to Potiphar's house and then to prison in order to get him ready uh, for yes. the palace. Yeah, Hallelujah. God has a purpose. God, yes. God, God. God. God, God has a purpose. Uh, he had a purpose for Moses. Uh, yeah, he had a purpose for Moses uh, to become the liberator of his people. Uh, God intended for Moses uh, to tell Pharaoh uh, uh, to let my people go. But but before God could use him in that way, uh, right. uh, God had to use him uh, by sending him on the backside of the mountain uh, for 40 years. Uh, yeah, when God put, in your, put you in a holding pattern, uh, just know that the holding pattern involves a process. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What you are going through now is a process. Uh, uh, you, what you are experiencing now is preparing you for better. Uh, the pain is preparing you for better. The suffering is preparing you for better. The tears are preparing you for better. Uh, look at somebody and tell them the process uh, is preparing you for better. <laughs> better finances, uh, better family life, uh, better Christians uh, because the fact of the matter is uh, God has to build up your courage. Uh, God has to teach you self-esteem. Uh, God has to help you overcome your fears. Uh, God has to show you how to handle your tears. Uh, yeah, you need to know uh, how to walk through uh, the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, you need to know uh, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You need to have a faith uh, that surpasses fear. You need to know that we've been may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But you will never get what God has purpose for your life until you go through a process. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank until you. you go through the process. Ah, uh -oh. ah, then the third, the pattern helps you to live your life according to his plans. God's holding pattern involves a purpose and a process in order for you to live your life according to God's plans. Yes. David always understood he was destined to be the next king yes. of Israel. Uh-huh. Ah, ah, but 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 in order to get, uh, in order to get, in order to get, uh, to the kingdom, God had to put him in the holding pattern. And beloved, God does not put you in a holding pattern to punish you, but 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 God puts you in a holding pattern to protect you. And 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 when you are in the process, you are between the potential and the perfection that God's plan that God has planned for your life. I mean, when you look at uh, the pattern helps you to, to live your, your life according to God's plans. You understand that it was 15 years between when David was anointed 
uh, to be the next king. And when David actually became the king, 15 years passed between David's anointing and his ascension to the kingdom of Israel. But David knew that God had a plan for his life. And being put on hold was just a part of the purpose and the process of living out God's plan for his life. Well, when you are in a dead end, cut back, laid off, a no money, COVID envir environment, mess up situation, uh, uh, don't forget that God has a plan for your life. Uh, I mean, when the world laughs at you, uh, and when people tell you that your concepts are crazy, and when your ideas are idiotic, uh, just remember that God has a plan for your life. Uh, yeah, yeah. And can I encourage you today to just to hang on in there? Uh, for God has not changed his mind about you. Uh, uh, God has not changed his mind about your family, uh, about your business, about your marriage. Uh, about your family or about your health. Uh, uh, people may forget, but God has not forgotten you. Uh, uh, you are getting ready to reap what you have sown. Uh, I mean, every tear you cry, you are getting ready to reap in joy. Uh, uh, so be not dismayed uh, of whatever be tired uh, that God will, uh, that God will uh, uh, take care of you. Uh, well, when I started this Somali presentation. Uh, I started by telling you about a flight uh, that I was on that had to be put into a holding pattern. Uh, but let me tell you one more thing uh, about the airline industry. Uh, the airline industry is set up uh, uh, using a hub and a spoke model. Uh, uh, that is if you are traveling somewhere uh, that does not offer a direct flight, uh, uh, you would need to fly to a hub airport uh, and use a connecting flight uh, to finally get to your destination uh, and God's transportation system uh, uh, operates through a hub and spokes uh, uh, you may have experienced something similar uh, in your own life uh, uh, God will often take you somewhere uh, that you feel is the exact opposite of where you are going uh, uh, all times you have to go through the process uh, to get to the place uh, because there is something that God uh, that God wants you to learn first. Uh, and I stopped by to tell you uh, that you got to realize uh, that there is a purpose uh, and there is a process uh, and there is a plan. Uh, that's why God puts you in a holding pattern. Uh, and remember that God, uh, that God, uh, that God will, uh, that God will see you through. Uh, and no matter how long uh, that you have been, being in the holding pattern uh, that God has not forgotten about you, uh, that God has not forgotten about your hurt, uh, that God has not forgotten about your pain, uh, that God has not forgotten about your anger, uh, that God has not forgotten about your disappointments, uh, he has not forgotten about your trouble nor your trauma, uh, he has not forgotten about your suffering nor your strife, uh, all you got to do is just hang on in there and don't you give up your breakthrough is on the way your deliverance is on the way your joy is on the way your peace is on the way your love is on the way so be not dismayed whatever be tired god will god will oh yes he will god will When God puts you in a holding pattern. For David, it was 15 years. He was anointed king to be over Israel. And it took 15 years later for him to get to the, the palace. <clears throat> because
because God put him in a holding pattern. Beloved, you may be in a holding pattern today. God may have put you in a holding pattern today. Or you may have, you may be in one already. But let me encourage you that God has not forgotten about you. He knows where you are. He knows where you live. He knows your name. Because the Bible declares that your name is written on his hands. Your name is written in the palm of his hand. So he has not forgotten about you. But just know that he has you in this holding pattern for a purpose. Just know that he wants to take you through a process. As Job said, only when you go through this process can you come out as pure gold. Because he has a plan for your life. I praise God for the holding patterns that God placed me on so many times in my life. You could even say that for the past two years, all of us, each of us, we have been on a holding pattern. God has allowed COVID to place us in a holding pattern. It's a process. Shots and boosters. That's the process. Social distancing ourselves. That's, that's a process. That's all part of this process in this holding pattern because God has a purpose and God has a plan. And I don't know about you, but I'm just waiting to see what God does next. I'm praising him in, in advance for what God is going to do next. When we come out of this situation, we will not be the same. We will not be the same. And I know it's going to be better because God always does better. So I praise God for the holding pattern. This morning, there may be somebody here that do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We dare not leave today without giving you the opportunity to, to experience the new birth. To know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. To know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. Yeah. If that's you today, we invite you to come. If you're watching, we invite you to say that in the chat, I want to be saved. If by chance you're here today, you simply need a church home. I think we Thank would you. love to be your church family. I would love to be your pastor. The members of Mount Cabaret would just love when you help you grow to become all that God has created you to be. If by chance you're watching, you simply want to put in the chat, I want to belong. If by chance you were falling away from God, you're falling away from the church, but now you want to come back to God, you want to come back to church. God is standing with outstretched arms, the church arms are open wide to receive you back into the family. In the chat, just put, I'm coming home. The choir is singing, the invitation is extended today. I need the oil. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh.
God for the visitation of God's Holy Spirit in this in this place on this day. Um, I do ask that you will continue to keep all of our sick and our shut in, our bereaved, lifted up in in your family, uh, in 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 our church family. I do ask that you keep Reverend Bonnie lifted up in your prayers. Uh, she continues to make progress one day at a time, but we praise God for the progress. I ask that you keep, uh, continue to keep Sister Sharif Davis lifted up in your prayers as she continues to recover. We ask that you keep, uh, continue to keep uh, Sister Kiana in your prayers. She laid the rest of her cousin on yesterday, so we ask that you continue to keep her and her family in your prayers. Continue to keep Sister Carol in your prayers. She laid the rest of her uh, best friend, uh, Sister Joanne, so continue to keep uh, the family lifted up in your prayers. Uh, we certainly believe that uh, God is can move through the power of prayer, but he did promise us that when we call that he would answer. And so we know that there's power in prayer. Amen. I uh, ask that you would join us today at 3 o'clock if you are not already registered to do so uh, for the uh, retirement celebration of our presiding elder, Ernest Lee Montague Sr. at 3 o'clock today. Uh, and it's uh, a Zoom uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, please join us today if you haven't received the information. Uh, perhaps call your neighbor, and your neighbor will be able, your pew partner will be able to help you uh, with the Zoom information so that you can be a part of uh, the celebration. Uh, also, we do ask that you uh, keep Brother Mike in your prayers. His grandmother made us transition, so. Uh, so do ask that you would keep him in his in your prayers and his family. Uh, they will be traveling this week, uh, so uh, to uh, New York. So do ask that you would uh, keep them in your prayers as they travel and as they go through the reading. And amen. amen, amen. I'm excited today because this is just the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, Sunday after next is Easter Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. And we love it. This is, uh, will be the first time in two years that we would have celebrated Easter inside of this sanctuary. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. Amen. And because it's been two years on Friday, I, I sent out the letter. In my letter, I asked you for a thank offering. Uh, more or less, you know, uh, if, if you can stand and agree with me and give $500, God bless. If you can, don't worry about it. Give what you can. If you give more, give more. Amen. Because it's going to be exciting. The first time back in two years. Amen. Amen. And I can, I can, I, I, as for me and my house, I can say that we have been blessed of the Lord in the last two years. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Lord just kept on making ways out of no ways. Amen. Praise his holy name. Uh, 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 I really didn't know how much money I was spending dining out until I couldn't dine out. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I, in 20, I discovered how much money I was actually spending uh, in dining out. And, 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 and so uh, Reverend Angie, she got reacquainted with pots and pans and skillets. <laughs> Yes, she did. Uh, so, 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 yeah, when she got reacquainted with pots, pans, and skillets, because we couldn't go out, then I realized I'm saving a lot of money here. Uh, you know, uh, for for a family of four, you know, four and four, four. Even McDonald's is expensive for four. <laughs> You know, and so I, I said, God, praise God. We, that's, God just kept on making ways, just kept on making ways, amen. And so I can't help, I can't help but give him a thank offering 
on this Easter Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I pray that you would stand and join with me and, and be a part of the Thank Offering crowd. Amen. Bless his holy name. And 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 uh uh in twenty because my favorite grandbaby, my favorite grandbaby. Uh, y'all know that I have a favorite grandbaby. Yeah, my my favorite grandbaby. Uh, I spent money in February on her Easter attire that she didn't get to wear <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't have church in twenty for Easter. Yeah, that's and so she can wear that attire this year. <laughs> she ain't getting nothing new amen. this year. Amen, 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 amen. So I'm, I'm excited about what God is going to do in this house on Easter Sunday morning. And amen. And we do invite you to join us for our Easter sun, uh, uh, services at 7 a.m. and at 10 a.m. Also, join us for our Good Friday services on Friday, the 15th of April at 7 p.m. Uh, we got some preachers that's going to preach to us on that evening. And child of God, you don't want to miss hearing those preachers. Amen. Come and be blessed of the Lord. Amen. All right. We are ready now to go into our service of Holy Communion. And uh, let us break bread together on our knees. stand all over the church. You that do truth the answer, repent of your sin, the love and charity with your neighbor intend to lead a new life on the commandments of God. Walking in his holy ways, make your humble confession about Almighty God and say this take this sacrament to your comfort. You may be seated. General confession all together, Almighty God, God, Father of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all of them with hearts of repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you in word and magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we shall of all times and all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifolds and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, to, to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made that by his oblation of himself once offered the full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, his holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, at the supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. The body of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was broken for me on Calvary. I take, I eat, and I'm thankful that Jesus died for a sinner like me. The blood. my Savior's blood. When the blood of pigeons, heifers, bulls could no longer atone for the sins of humankind, Jesus shed his blood on Calvary. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I take, I drink, and I'm thankful that Jesus shed his blood just for me. After coming to this covenant, coming to the table, I rise now because I have renewed my covenant and I take the name of the Lord with me. My brothers and my sisters, you have the blood, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before you. You have his body and his blood. The body of Jesus. Take, eat, feast in your heart. Know that Jesus, he died to save you. You have the blood of Jesus. Take, drink, feast in your heart. Know that Jesus, that he shed his blood just for you. By partaking in the, 
the Lord's Supper, you have renewed your covenant. You will go in peace. Was it for crime The Lord's Prayer together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, our power and glory, forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your Father, the goodness, merciful to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain remission for our sins and all the other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, living sacrifice unto you, humbly beseeching you that all who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy, though our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, Yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And they communed together, Amen. and they stood, and they went out, and they sung a hymn. Time is filled with swift transition. Oh, to be safe. Oh. 
Oh, bless the Lord. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. It's been a mighty, mighty good day. And we thank God for it and we praise God for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And now, my father's children, I say unto you, as the Lord said unto Moses, that Moses may say to Aaron, that Aaron may say to the sons and daughters of Israel, yeah. may the Lord bless you and keep you. In your going out and your coming in. Yeah. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Yes, in your labor and in your leisure. May the Lord be gracious to you. In your joy and in your sorrow. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. In your laughter and then in your tears. And may the Lord give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Today, tomorrow, and forever. So, beloved, go in peace. Go in love. Go in joy. Go expecting a miracle. And the people of God said together.
Thank you for engaging in the ministry of giving. You can go to our website and click the Give tab. You can call the church office and give your gift with your debit or credit card. You can mail your gift to the church. You can bring your gift to the church during office hours, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4 p.m. You can give through Cash App on your smart device. Thank you for joining our virtual worship experience and may God continue to bless and keep you. Until the next Lord's Day, be well and be safe.